families. Um, Nora's Nora's actually staying with us now. Nora is Sarah's mom, and it's been like a huge support to, for us to be together. At the end of the day, no one completely understands like Nora does. So. Vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to share a statement with you and then a few words and I really appreciate everyone being here this week to lot to us. Shane, Sarah and Josh have now been detained for 254 days. The Iranian authorities seem to be trying to make it appear that they have, they have some ridiculous motive for entering Iran when it is absolutely obvious that if they did cross into the Iranian territory they have no intention of doing so. We're grateful. We received phone calls on March 9th, and they're very short. But we continue to hope for positive developments, including that the mothers of, of uh, these three kids will at last be granted our visa so we can visit Tehran. When Shane, Sarah, and Josh finally were allowed to call home, they all wanted to know why their case was taking so long to resolve. We have no good answers, and Iran does not have a good answer either. Our loved ones are not the only ones asking this question. I know that many supporters gathered here today and concerned people everywhere all over the world to have them in their thoughts and prayers. We're asking Iran to stop playing with our emotions. The fear and uncertainty has taken a terrible toll on us, and we can only imagine the strain on the kids. Every night we go to bed hoping that Iran has finally accepted that our loved ones are innocent and decided to allow them to return. But when we wake up, the nightmare continues. On behalf of Shane, Sarah, and Josh, thank you for everything you're doing, um, for the love and the strength of everybody in the community. I know you're among many people in the world that have concern about Shane, Josh, and Sarah and their release. And I just want to share a few things personally. Um, when, when I got the call from Shane several weeks ago, it seems like months already. I got one phone call. I talked to Shane a week before he went on this trip in July of last year. Since then, I've received one phone call that lasted a minute. That phone call was great for me in that. After four and a half months of no contact with anybody, the Swiss or um, our, our attorney, uh, Mr. Shafi, I woke up in the middle of the night. There are nights that I woke up thinking, are they alive? I mean, this might seem crazy to some of you, but as a mother, no one able to talk to Shane, Josh, or Sarah put that in my head. So when I got that phone call, at least it relieved that piece for me. Um, his first words to me were, Mom, this is Shane. I love you. I miss you. How are you? And that was like, I could hear the strength in his voice, and that was heartening for me because I know my son. Um, Shane's always concerned about other people. He's traveled all over the world. Shane would be the first one to cross the street or go anywhere and help any, anybody in need, wouldn't matter who they were. Um, he then asked, what's, what's going on? He had no idea. He said, I don't know what's going on with their case. They have no idea. They're totally shut out of any information. Our attorney is not allowed in to see them. He hasn't spoke to them once. Then he said, I'm worried about Nicole and Jen, and how are they? Those are his two sisters. They were, my kids are very close. And again, it resonated with Shane that's who Shane is. He's always concerned for others. You know, I, I shared with him the things we've sent. You know you have an attorney. He said, I know I have an attorney. They won't let us see him. They keep telling us soon. Nora and I are hearing that word a lot, soon. We've heard that word soon for eight months. It's time to get these three home. He ended our conversation with a lot of I love yous, a lot of I can't wait to hug yous, and I don't know what you're doing, Mom, but I know you're doing everything you can, and I can't tell you how grateful I am. So I walked away from that phone call thinking, this is my son. This is who he is. This is who Shane is. Um, I've had a lot of support from the community, especially recently people stopped me and talked to me about 
250 days. That must be overwhelming. You know, and as I was, you know, I've had people say to me, you're in your own prison. And I think we are, but I can walk away from my computer. I can get up and go for a walk. I can sit in the sun. I went out and rode in the St. Louis State Forest yesterday. These kids don't have that option. They don't have that option. They don't have the support that we have. And as a mother, that's, you know, to, to see my son, I mean, I envision him. I'm sure anyone who's a parent can imagine. You can't get rid of the pictures in your mind. I envision him being in this small place without the sun. Shane, Josh, and Sarah love the outdoors. They love nature. Obviously, that's why they were on this hiking trip in this beautiful area in Kurdistan. Um, you know, they don't have those options, and I know all three of them are strong, but how long can you be in a prison like this and be okay? That's my concern as a mother. You know, we're asking today, there's information up here on the 250-day the flyer, 250 days plus. We're also asking you to write um, President Obama and Secretary Clinton and ask them to do everything they possibly can to secure the release of Shane, Josh, and Sarah. Believe me, we are doing everything we can as families. It's enormous, the time we're putting into this, and that's not going to stop till they're home. We're determined, we're strong, you know, we have the support of three families in the community, and I also want to thank the community here in Pine City. Whether they're huge things that you've given, small things, they're real close to my heart. There's been a, a lot of support, and I appreciate that. Carol also has some flyer or some posters, and if any of you have a place in the community or anywhere that you can hang these posters in public to help get people to our website, I'd really appreciate it. So you can check with Carol on those. Um, and there's pictures over here of our kids. Certainly come up and take a look. The CD that's playing in the background is a CD that was made by a dear friend of theirs that spent time with them when they were in Damascus. And on the back of it, she dedicated this to them when they after they became detained. It says, the album is de dedicated to Sarah and Shane, the warmest hearts in Damascus. These three people are, and I'm, I'm a mom, so I'm speaking from a mother's heart, but I'm telling you, these three people are extraordinary human beings. They're kind, they're gentle, they're compassionate, and for them to be in this situation is very ironic and unfair. We've applied for our visas. We applied for them on January 6th. We're waiting. You know, we've, we've actually been told by the Iranian authorities that our visas have been granted, but we're waiting. We don't have them. We can't go until we have them in our hand. We're hoping we can go, of course, see our children, talk to the Iranian authorities, let them know who these three are. We'd love to bring them home. If we get to go to Iran, which I'm hoping we can, coming home without them is going to be devastating. So I appreciate all your thoughts and prayers and gathering and support. Anything you can give us in any kind of support is greatly appreciated. And I just want to make sure that, that you're all aware of how grateful we are. We are for everything.